But of course, you're going to be sitting down today with former WWE superstar Antonio the Promise Thomas, a star of New England Championship Wrestling. They will be promoting, or we'll get, we're going to be promoting their upcoming event this Saturday night at the Cove Community Center at Beverly, Massachusetts. It's a uh, 7 p.m. bell time. It's going to be huge, huge triple threat match headlining the show for the NECW Heavyweight Championship. And Tony will be there as well as the other stars of NECW. So don't miss out on it this Saturday night, February 8th at 7 p.m. right here at the Cove Community Center in Beverly, Massachusetts. But without further ado, we will bring in Antonio right now. Antonio is on the line. How's it going today, Antonio? What's up, Graham? Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. No problem, man. No problem. With uh, NECW coming up this Saturday, I just discovered it this past fall. I saw it back on a dirt sheet back in September, and I've gone to almost every event since then. I'm um, extremely excited for Saturday. I will also be there in attendance, ready for some NECW action. But the first question I wanted to ask you was, of course, the Promise nickname. Your name is, of course, Antonio the Promise Thomas. I'm wearing the, uh, the Promise wristband as I speak right now. I bought it at the first show that I went to in October. So I just want to get your thoughts where did the nickname The Promise come from? I got that back in 2002. As actually, I got it from NECW. Sheldon Goldberg, who has been the promoter since NECW started in 2000. Um, uh, his booker at the time was a man by the name of Sonny Goodspeed. And uh, Sheldon uh, saw the nickname uh, Promise on a boxer, and at the time I was wearing like a black boxing robe to the ring, and uh, he put, you know, two and two together, promise, Thomas, it rhymes, uh, and I got an email from the booker saying, you know, blah, 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 can you make the show on this date, and oh, by the way, your nickname, new nickname is going to be The Promise, and uh, for like the six months prior to that, because I'd only been working about six months at the time. Uh, my name was just Antonio Thomas. It's always been since my first match. And uh, people would ask, ring announcers would ask, well, do you have a nickname? Uh, and I would be, uh, I, don't, I don't, just Antonio Thomas. And uh, I was always thinking, what would be a good nickname? And um, there's nothing ever that really clicked or that I used until that. And uh, it stuck ever since. Mm -hmm. And you were back in the WWE back from 05 to 06, a part of the heartthrobs with your tag team partner, Romeo Roselli. Um, even before I discovered NECW, I was, I was very familiar with his work. I used to attend shows in the uh, Connecticut area for Northeast Wrestling, right. and uh, Romeo Roselli is up there a few times this show, um, every, you know, every once in a while. And when I discovered that you guys were tag team partners, my mind was completely blown when I saw you at the NECW show uh, just a number of months ago, so I thought that was pretty cool. But um, going back and watching clips of you in WWE, it's just tremendous. Uh, we were talking before the show how much your image has changed in the last 10 years or so. Not, right. even, not, not right. even 10 years, but uh, it, it's just, outsta just outstanding um, how much you've changed since that point in time, how much your career has grown since the time that you were in WWE. But before we get any further, I just want to get your thoughts. Romeo Roselli, your thoughts on uh, you guys tag team together in WWE and that you guys were, I believe you were even friends long before you even made it to the main roster. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm, we trained with, uh, originally with the same trainer. I started <clears throat> at Killer Kowalski's and then uh, I moved to a trainer here in Springfield, uh, which is close to the home, and, and um, at the time, and that's where I met Romeo before I even had my first match. And uh, when I was just learning the basics, taking you know, learning to take bumps and do arm drags, uh, he was like, "Hey, we." I think it was the first time that we met on a Sunday practice. We used to come down on Sundays from or come up from Sundays from New York, and he said, "Hey." You know, you know, you, uh, we kind of look alike, uh, we should team up. He goes, there's no tag teams. And I was like, yeah, man, sure. Uh, I was like, I don't even know how to do an arm drag yet. <laughs> I never even had a match. And, uh, we just kind of, we clicked ever since then because we're both, um, very similar, both very determined, both very, um, goal oriented individuals, hardworking in terms of, um, we knew what we wanted. Our goals were the same. Um, working out, 
diet, training. We both wanted to make it to the WWE. We weren't doing this to um, as a hobby. And um, so we started traveling uh, a lot together with, with you know, to shows all around Northeast New York, New England, Maine. Um, and then it wasn't until 2004 when uh, the Eastern Wrestling Alliance finally put us together as a tag team. And then it was shortly thereafter where we took two different roads, but we both ended up uh, six months later both in OVW. Mm -hmm. And then after your WWE stint, did you guys stay as a tag team for much longer or did you guys go your different ways? Uh, no, we stayed, I mean, we're still a tag team. It's just our schedules. Um, he, he got married. He does a lot of acting. He has a, a, a very good job that he has to travel a lot with. Um, so as far as working the same places, promotions, and just lining up our schedules, Maybe once or twice a year we'll team up. Uh, certainly we'd like to team up more. We're doing a lot for Chikara um, before they shut down for the past year. Uh, but hopefully <clears throat> coming up in May when they start up, we'll be back there again. But, um, yeah, we when, when I got released, I, just, I took a month off just to kind of the, – the last thing I wanted to do was wear a boa and do the gimmick. And we just kind of didn't really do that until Chikara came around. Um, so I worked for them last year and or two years ago. And but we still teamed. Um, and I love tag team wrestling. We're we're a true tag team. Um, John's like my brother. Well, I'm like his brother. Um, I stood up for his wedding, and we may not talk with each other all the time or see each other all the time, but. Um, you know, it, it, we, we traveled together, we lived right next door to each other, um, you know, we were a true definition of a tag team, and it's, um, I, it's a shame that we weren't given much longer to grow and develop before, um, you know, the world could see us. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned your time in Jakarta as well. Um, where has been your favorite place, favorite country to work in um, since the start of your career and the favorite wrestler you've worked against? Uh, favorite? I mean, if I had to pick a country uh, outside of America, it's easily Japan. Um, I worked for all Japan from 2008 to 2010. And... Uh, I mean, that's, I, I always wanted to go to Japan. I always wanted to make it WWE, but I always wanted to be, um, I always was a huge um, uh, Ring of Honor fan, huge All Japan fan uh, in the 90s, early 2000s. I always, I love WWE, but I was always more of a, whether it be hip hop or, um, movies. I always like the alternative kind of Sundance type, you know, niche type stuff. I didn't like what the masses were into. And um, I always wanted to be, you know, the quote unquote indie darling, do the Ring of Honor, go to Japan. And it wasn't until after uh, WWE that I finally got a chance to travel the world and go learn all these different styles and put pieces of the puzzle together for. For wrestling, um, and Japan was just you get on a bus, you get off, you go wrestle. Um, it's competitive. It's more competitive, but um, I learned so I learned how to work light over there. I learned comedy spots. Um, I learned how to. I learned so much over there, and um, to just have a. I mean, a, WWE is where you want to be, but. Just pure wrestling in the ring. It by far it's Japan. And then working in all these places, who's been your favorite opponent to work against up to this point in your career? Oh man, um, I had a lot of uh, early on. It was probably uh, R.J. Brewer, um, mm -hmm. with, known as John Walters back then. Um, then it was probably. 
uh, Eddie Edwards. We both kind of came up at the same time, and were we trained under Steve Bradley at the same time, and worked together a lot there before WWE, and then after my time in WWE. Oh um, man, um, as far as WWE goes, Val Venus was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, man. Mm. Uh, Gold Dust. Oh, okay. Fucking okay. awesome. Very yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, I, I know all the all the guys that you would think would be um, would be uh, <laughs> at the top of the list. Uh, you know, some of the best workers. Mm-hmm. Um, those come to mind right away. Just incredible was also. Um, yeah, I didn't have to think at all. It was so easy. It was a, <laughs> it was a night off. Mm-hmm. And also, if that was a tough question for you, this is probably going to be even tougher. Um, I was just about to ask you, who would be one person that you still would like to face? And, you know, of course, in the industry today, um, WWE, TNA, NECW, ROH, wherever, um, is there still that one person that you're looking to face um, at some point in your career before you retire? Uh, Well, I mean, obviously everyone, I mean, I always wanted to (laughs) wrestle Shawn Michaels. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, right now that I haven't worked with a dream match, so um, to speak. What's that? A dream match, so to speak, of yours. Uh, a dream match. I mean, would at here? I mean, obviously, it would be Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan. Uh, mm. cause, you know, so you grew. I grew up watching. Um, realistically, now. Um, and uh, Christian, uh, oh, okay. uh, Kurt Angle. I don't know how much longer. I know he's got some health issues now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, someone like like Christian, uh, Daniel Bryan. Again, we worked together back in '07 mm-hmm. um, uh, on the independent scene. And there's so many. Um, I haven't worked with, I teamed with him a few months ago, but working with uh, Mike Mondo, Mm -hmm. um, a good friend of mine since OVW. And um, I, I, you know, probably someone like Regal again, who Mm -hmm. the last time I worked with him, I was so damn green um, that now uh, we get out, I think we just get in there and wrestle and, and have a hell of a match. Um, so those those guys come to mind. I mean, there's so many. Uh, pretty much someone that, that I, I, you know, I can I can call, you know, I can, I like going in there and feeling things out. I like wrestling. I like someone that would, will keep me safe and um, um, that, you know, you mess well with where you get in there and you don't even have to say anything to them. You just, you know what each other is thinking. So, Mm -hmm. and you mentioned before how you and, uh, you and Romy are such the tag team, both inside and outside of the ring. You guys were a great tag team during your WWE stint and even still to this day. Um, and also you just mentioned Regal who you faced in your debut match for the world tag team championships on the main roster in WWE. So that's pretty cool as well. But um, right. my question for you was that with the WWE right now and their tag team division, it's a resurgence, so to speak, of the tag team division in the last few months or so. Um, what are your thoughts on tag team uh, and tag team wrestling, not only in the WWE, well, specifically in the WWE, but in the world of wrestling as a whole? Your thoughts in the current state of the tag team division? Uh, I thought it, uh, the past year there's been new life breathed into it. Um, you know, for the longest time, tag teams were kind of just put together to be broken up, or um, you know, two two top guys put together. You know, like um, Edge and Orton, Big Show and Jericho. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, I mean, you have probably, I guess, ten legitimate tag teams uh, in WWE itself um 
since the Shield came in, their matches and six man tags. I mean, this is the past year has been as good a year for six man tags probably since the Freebirds and Bon Air. Mm-hmm. And there's more tag teams now than probably since uh, like 87, 80, first few Survivor Series where there were, you know, you have the tag team match with 10 teams in there. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, no offense to any of the workers, but a lot of the singles matches you see over and over again. But a lot of the tag team matches I'll always watch because I just love tag team wrestling. It's, it's, um, and it's good to see it, you know, at the forefront. It's good to see the Shield and, um, Cody Rhodes and Goldust and even see the, the outlaws back who can still, <laughs> you know, Billy Gunn's 50, but those guys can work circles around, like, work mm-hmm. the, in terms of knowing what to do, when to do it. They're, they're, they're just, they're brilliant. And, uh, and you see that. You see, um, you know, I, I watch, I remember some of the tag matches Dustin Rhodes would have in WCW 20 years ago, and he's brought that back now, this past year. Um, just a uh, smoothness. Uh, it's just tag team it, it, it makes me feel good to see so many tag teams put together. How long they'll last, I don't know, but you, you know, they already broke up the prime time players. Um, yep. Cesaro and, and Swagger will probably be broken up, but I mean, you got teams like the Usos, mm-hmm. you have the Wyatts, you have whether, even when Roman Reigns breaks off, you'll probably still have some form of the shield. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so, I mean, even even 3MB and, and the Matadors, who are looked at as jokes, I mean, those guys are good workers and have good tag team matches. Mm-hmm. So, and um, and Ring of Honor too has has brought you know tag team wrestling back uh, strong. They've always been a, a strong proponent of tag team wrestling. And, I mean, when I was when. Haas and Benjamin debuted for them three years ago or so against uh, the Kings of Wrestling. Man, that I was like, "Fuck, man, this is this is tag team wrestling." I was, <laughs> I was, and TNA for the longest time. Say what you want about them, they always stress tag team wrestling. Mm-hmm. So, tag team wrestling through history, if you look at it uh, as, as main evented, um, you know. They invented so many territories and so many, um, so many shows. The Brain Busters and the Rockers were main eventing. They were the last match to go on when Hogan was, um, when they were on the same shows with Hogan because nobody could follow them up. And, uh, um, you know, I, yeah, I'm 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 glad. I'm glad tag team wrestling is back. I wish it was I wish it was like this when um when I was coming up through OVW and then in WWE, but um you know, better late than never. Oh, absolutely. And you just mentioned it before. Hopefully the resurgence of the tag team division isn't coming to an end anytime soon. Like you said, the primetime players, the Real Americans, um, the Shield even looks to be splitting up. So hopefully this isn't short-lived. And it was even last night that the tag team titles were defended inside a steel cage nonetheless. Um, it was a few weeks ago on Raw that a tag team match closed the show with the Usos yeah. defeating... Uh, uh, Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt, which was one heck of a matchup. And uh, speaking of that tag team title match from last night, the current WWE tag team champions, believe it or not, the Outlaws, were the team that you faced in your TNA debut at 2007 Destination X. Um, so it's just crazy to think about all these years later that you were able to face one of the greatest tag teams in uh, in pro wrestling history in the form of Billy Gunn and, uh, and, and Road Dogg, of course, not going by those names at the time, but... Uh, I right. just wanted to get your thoughts and having the opportunity to face them at that event a number of years ago. And if you've ever considered jumping ship to TNA on a regular basis, because I know that was a one-off appearance. Um, yeah, we facing them was awesome. I mean, they were, uh, uh, they, uh, we had a lot of ideas. Obviously we wanted to make, uh, 
a great impression and, and it's kind of hard to steal the show with the talent they had there, but that's what we wanted to do. The match didn't come out the way we wanted it to. I don't, I still haven't watched it, but it just didn't click. But those guys were awesome to work with, very giving with us and, um, you know, just easy, easy to work with. It wasn't like pulling teeth and, mm -hmm. uh, um, we had done a tag match a few months earlier and um, just brought in, that was at a time when they were bringing in tag team, they, the outlaws, you know, at different times. You know, each week they face a different tag team. Um, it would have been nice to get a um, a little bit longer run. I would have loved to have gone to TNA then, but... Uh, I think that certain people who are creative want expecting us to kind of do the the hard prop gimmick. They kind of intimated at that um, to kind of be as flamboyant and gay <laughs> as possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that just wasn't us. We were past that at that point. We wanted, and it didn't, you know, if that, you know, if that had any bearing on us not coming back, then... You know, it it sucks, but, um, you know, it was just it was time to move on. But we worked, but later that year, we worked um, at UMass. There mm -hmm. was a show. We worked with the Outlaws again, and well, I'll tell you, talk about a mark-out moment when they could actually do their WWE entrance, <laughs> you know. With the, I mean, we're on the outside yelling, suck it, like, mm -hmm. Mark and Alpha. That way. It was like, we're watching these guys when we're in high school and college. Yeah, yeah. Now we're, you know, so that, that's a moment I'll always remember. So at this point in your career, you've competed in WWE, you've been to TNA, you've been all the way over to Japan. So at this point in your career, what are your goals and aspirations going forward? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I would like to... As I said before, I've always been a huge Ring of Honor fan. I went to a couple of their first shows they ever had at, in Philadelphia, and uh, um, I worked for them in the past here and there, and I, I would like to be a regular there. Um, I, I want to go to England. I want to learn the British style, um, even though it, it um, I'm a huge world of sport fan, even though... Uh, that's really not the predominant style over there, kind of, sadly, anywhere. Uh, but um, honestly, I want to be making a living um, at wrestling. And that's very hard to do today. Um, I want to go back to Japan. I want to I wanna kind of be the complete opposite of what I was in WWE. I want to kind of be an internet darling. Mm -hmm. not, a, not I shouldn't say an internet darling, but I want to, I would like to have a regular gig in ROH. I'd like to do the PWGs. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to go to Japan on a, a regular basis. Uh, if something opened up in WWE, absolutely. Uh, you jump at it, but um, as a tag team, myself and my partner, both in our 30s now, we're certainly, my body feels better than ever. You know, no injuries, no nothing like that. But uh, they are looking for different talent now. So um, TNA certainly, if you know, uh, definitely be a possibility. Uh, Mexico, um, just travel the, just keep traveling. You know, go back to Puerto Rico, go back to Japan, go back to Europe, um, and just. It's not about, uh, it's more about a body of work when I finally, you know, say that's it. I just not going to wrestle anymore. It's about looking back and, and, and having a full, uh, putting all the pieces of the puzzle together, I guess. And, um, yeah, you know, that's, uh, kind of where it is. I, I don't, I don't look too too much into the future I'm very laid back and kind of you know just play it day by day and, and have my short term goals and my long term goals but the thing is in wrestling is just keep per persistent um you know so 
pretty much it. Grow, stay healthy, and, and grow as a performer and an entertainer. Oh, absolutely. And uh, one final question before we let you go. Uh, <clears throat> this upcoming Saturday, New England Championship Wrestling Triple Threat Match. You're going for the championship against Slick Wagner Brown and the current reigning champion who you have history with, Sean Burke. Um, it's going to be an explosive night. Any last any uh, last minute comments before your match this Saturday? Yeah, uh, everybody listening, Endicott College, if you are listening, it is right down the road, NECW, Cove Community Center, Beverly, Mass., 7 p.m. bell time. You will see great night of wrestling. You will see wrestling. There is no, um, you know, you will get two and a half, three hours of solid wrestling. You can be up close uh, right there with the action um you can meet and greet with some of your favorite stars you have women that can actually wrestle and don't just claw and pull hair <laughs> or meet each other in the forehead and the eye um <laughs> uh you know you're gonna see a hell of a main event where i will get my necw title back from sean burke a man who was my best friend at one point a man whom i trained and help mentor, um, and also against Slick Wagner Brown, who is a great friend of mine and has been for for ten years. Um, you know, uh, I'm going there to nothing less than to to get my title back. And if you live anywhere in the vicinity, especially if you are listening to this now at Endicott College or the surrounding area. Go to NECW.TV, check it out, all the information's on there. Cove Community Center. Also, check out NECW TV. Um, go to the website, it'll give you the exact listing. It comes on Thursday night, 12 p.m. Um, I believe, uh, I don't know the channel, I think it's channel 62, I'm not familiar. I can't remember the exact call letters, but it's on NECW TV if uh, you check it out and um, you will get your money's worth I guarantee you you heard him folks New England Championship Wrestling this upcoming Saturday night at 7pm the bell time at the Cove Community Center down the street here from Endicott College right here in Beverly Massachusetts um, any last minute uh, social links that you would like to plug before you take off Antonio uh, yeah hit me up on Twitter at Thomas Thomas. Uh, also, uh, I run my own wrestling gym, Ring Sport Pro Wrestling in the Springfield area. Uh, if you are interested, um, you can email me at ringsportprowrestling at gmail.com. Hit me up on Twitter. Um, I'm also on Facebook under Antonio Thomas. Um, Twitter's easier to get me at, but either one, uh, if you're interested in becoming a pro wrestler, you will learn how to wrestle. You will, uh, you know, learn from somebody that has been there and done that. And, um, um, there's a lot of, um, great trainers, great schools out there all around the country. Um, but you know, I've, I've learned and trained all around the world. And if you live in the, Connecticut area, the Western Mass, Central Mass area, always wanted to get into professional wrestling, don't know how, uh, hit me up, and also, you can also come talk to me at the show this Saturday, uh, the Cold Community Center, um, that's it, man, at Thomas Tom. Sounds great, man, thanks for joining us, and good luck on Saturday. Thank you, Graham. Yep, no problem, man, see ya. All right, take care.